Halloween and you want chocolate, you have to go to the store, buy your own chocolate. They should make somewhere for adults to go trick or treat because it's kind of bullshit. What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel and today we're going to talk about Kindred Spirits with Amy Bruni and Adam Berry and then we're also going to do the Ghost Adventures review from the two hour Halloween special on Route 666. I hope I said Bruni right because I got trolled by all y'all. Sorry, I'm just, I was never that big of a Ghost Hunters fan. So review on Kindred Spirits, which is a weird title, right? Like, um, it sounds happy friendly and it sounds, you know, Kindred Spirits means basically you're trying to find others that are alike to you. Um, so, you know, and Amy's always been like really kind of like the girl next door, super sweet, so she must be looking for the light or the positive side of paranormal investigating. Amy and Adam both were on Ghost Hunters, which is Pilgrim, which is known for being one of the biggest production studios in Hollywood for haunted shows. And in 2014, I believe, they broke off from Pilgrim, um, they basically quit. I think there were some issues when Amy got pregnant um, that studio is known for not liking women to take time off. And unfortunately, when you get pregnant, uh, what do you do? It takes nine months to, to bake the turkey. So anyway, they broke off, did their own thing, and now Amy and Adam are both executive producers, which is the top of the top for their new show, Kindred Spirits. You know, it actually aired a couple weeks ago. I haven't had time to watch it until finally yesterday, and and I was pleasantly surprised. And I was like, finally, somebody has has stepped up their game um, to be a much more decent, better, you know, paranormal show than what we're used to seeing, like with the usual riffraff. So Adam and Amy both are a part of this event system they've been doing for a while called Stranger Escapes. Blake has attended a couple of their conventions, which is where they travel across the United States. They rent out haunted locations and have conventions. And uh, they usually rake in a lot of money. They do ghost hunts, they do tours, they do meet and greets. Um, Grant Wilson has been known to have a board for participating in that event as well. So what makes their show better and more progressive than what we've seen? Well, a couple of things. So we all know that Adam Barry, he has definitely been open about his uh, sexuality. He is a gay man. And then Amy is just the girl next door. And I really was so happy to see they didn't really outshine one another. They were very even, and it's such a step in the right direction for female investigators. Thank God we have a good one representing us out there. You know, Amy seems to be um, very more on the emotional, attentive side. However, she likes to write the facts down. I liked that she had the notebook while she was going through doing the interview, making sure that she had everything down. Um, she also referenced it later. I like that they were honest and raw, that while they were doing the investigation, she was still using that pad of paper. So yeah, she was looking over her notes and probably reading off some questions. At least they weren't trying to hide it or fake it. At least they were being honest, saying, this is how I do my scientific research. This is how I interact. This is the one episode that took place in Pennsylvania. Um, I think it was a woman named Catherine um, was completely convinced that it was all family that was haunting her location. So it actually premiered on TLC, but on Destination America, they had the same exact episode, but they added like a little bit more footage and then they had like footnotes at the bottom. I don't know if you guys got to see this, 
Um, it was kind of like an extension of showing stuff that they didn't have time to show with the full episode. So now the concerns I had with this was they had full sentences um, scrolling across the bottom, which was really hard to read that much um, and be attentive and listen to what was going on with Adam and Amy while they were doing, um, you know, the actual interview. I know that this was kind of a special, um, it wasn't like the way they're going to be consistently running, so I'm okay with that. They did shoot Adam in the library. He was doing like research, looking up the little girl Lucy, or I think it was Lucille or something like that. Um, she had died in the mill down the road, basically from this house. They started interacting and getting EVPs that there was a child there. Um, she did give the name Lucy, and then they did discover that this woman, Catherine, her son Adam was there as well. You know, unfortunately, when you're doing a new series, there's always going to be trial and error, especially like Amy and Adam have never done executive production work. So I know that they worked really close with Meg Nichols, who was the EP for Pilgrim, for Ghost Hunters, and all of those different series. So I'm sure that they learned a lot from Meg Nichols. Problem was, there were a couple little flukes I saw. Um, if you noticed, when they went into the forest, Adam had um, like a DSLR camera that was a full spectrum camera. He had the full spectrum um, light on top of the camera. I was wondering why they weren't showing any footage while they were out there being actually in the woods or the forest when they were doing kind of like an investigation um, digital recording session. And I realized when they walked away, the reason they didn't use any of that footage was because Adam forgot to turn his full spectrum light on. So that's just little tiny mistakes. Like people are gonna make them. It's really hard to uh, remember all those things. And if it was one of their first episodes, they were probably still nervous. He just forgot to turn the light on. So unfortunately, um, there's sometimes, depending on what camera that was, there was probably an internal full spectrum camera that came on automatically. But that's why most people use, you know, the extra lights on top for more illumination because it's just weak. Whatever, is cam whatever came in the camera is just weak. It's not enough light source. Um, and they probably did go over the video footage and it, it probably just still wasn't enough for the light source. So I'm assuming they were probably kicking themselves for not being able to use that footage. But then later I noticed when they were doing the interactions with the child and the bear, every time they cut to the footage that Adam had with the DSLR camera, it was once again the full spectrum. This time he did have the light on, however the lens was very blurry. I don't know if you guys noticed the footage was super, super blurry. Um, it's really hard to you know, have a steady hand to be able to keep it in focus. I'm not sure if it was an autofocus or not. I'm assuming that it was not an autofocus camera, which this is kind of going back to basics of film and production. If it was an autofocus, it would have automatically adjusted with the, uh, the light source and the amount of light that he had. Um, since it was probably a manual source, he probably didn't really know how to use the camera properly and it ended up being blurry the whole time. So that was unfortunate, but once again, it's just a little hiccup when you're going into production, especially for your first big show that you're actually producing. Now in the extra series that I saw on Destination America, they had like the scrolling text, like I said, on the bottom, and they it was talking about how um, when they were doing basically some sort of a search through the woods, Adam and Amy came across a burial site um, some sort of like a grave site and so they thought that it could have been related to Native Americans so they went to the local um, I, I think it was like a tribe a local tribe asked for a shaman to come out and look at it just to give their opinion on if it was actually Native American burial or not and on the scrolling text it did say that um, it was confirmed through the shaman that it was some sort of a haunt of a burial location and it probably would increase the haunts um, especially if it had ever been disturbed or if someone didn't like the property, you know, being, you know, used the way it was. And so I had a little bit of concern with why that wasn't related in the story and it was only put on like the scrolling text for like the after scenes footage. Um, I didn't like that this female, um, so Catherine had a daughter in the episode and the daughter had said she'd been scratched down her leg and it made kind of like swirly things on her leg. Um, I don't see a child scratching someone. I've never seen that in all of the investigations I've done. Um, so when, when scratches happen, that really, really makes me worried as an investigator. I like to think like everyone that I'm only going to run into good 
or family or of the light, but it's just not the case. You have to play both sides, like not sure, not aware of what you're going to run into because we can't physically see this realm. We can only use our other sensations to be able to interact with it or catch things on camera or EVPs. And so I was concerned with why they didn't go into the scratching more. Um, Amy had mentioned that sometimes kids if or someone, if they're so desperate to um, get the attention of someone that they will you know, accidentally scratch them. I just didn't really agree with that statement. That's just my opinion from being in ghost hunting for so long. Um, my opinion with scratching or like physical assaults is usually not a good sign. It's not a child trying to get your attention. Um, and especially if they did have some sort of a burial site that they stumbled across, um, perhaps there was more entities than just the child Adam or the son Adam and then this little kid Lucy that was killed, killed down, you know, in the mill, which is horribly sad. She was basically cut in half. You know, the woman Catherine was very adamant that it was her family that was haunting her house, which we would all like to hope so. I even do that, you know, if I have uh, a noise in my house or something, of course, like, I'm going to go to the positive side and say, let's just hope that it was my Aunt Jean or, you know, something like that. But it's just not always the case. Like, you have to be realistic with yourself. And I felt like during the interview when Amy was talking to Catherine about, like, who could it be if it was your family, you could kind of see in Amy's face, like, she wanted to say, um... I know that you want this to be your family, but it, it may not be. And I just wish that Amy would have been more honest with Catherine about that. Um, maybe she was holding back because she felt bad. You know, she didn't want to scare her probably and, and, and other things. But I just think as investigators, it's our job to just be truthful and be honest. And although Catherine really, really wanted it to be just family um, and I mean you don't want to go in and just scare and be like it's a demon that's not what I'm saying um, it's not just demons that scratch people or that can harm people it could just be a really angry pissed off spirit or someone that doesn't understand that they're stuck in the gray zone but I feel like Amy just should have been a little bit more honest but once again it was you know the first few episodes they're probably getting in the groove of it. It's going to take trials and tribulations. I think they are on the right path and I'm actually super happy that there's another show out that I'll definitely appreciate watching. You know, at the end, she was basically showing Catherine the EVPs that they captured. Lucy was a three-year-old that had been sawed in half by mistake. It was a total freak accident. And, uh, you know, she was kind of relating it to her daughter. Amy said, my daughter is three years old and eight months, so she was really connecting with how traumatic that would be for a child that age to die. Um, and there were a few times she shed some tears. Um, while she was going over the evidence, she was shedding tears. And um, it's really a beautiful thing when you find a paranormal investigator that is really sincere. Like they're being like, this is how I feel. I feel bad about it. I'm upset. And like you can tell it hits close to home. I could actually assume that Amy is probably more, more than likely an empath. Um, and either she hasn't tapped into it or she doesn't really know she's an empath. So it's really cool to see somebody interacting with the other side and not being afraid to show that emotion. At the end, they brought Catherine and her daughter flowers and gave them a bundle of yellow flowers. And um, I just, once again, it's adding those little pieces that um, are so sincere to people when you meet people in this industry that are going through haunts, especially when it's not like in a business or like an inn or a hotel, it's in your house. Um, these people become very distraught sometimes, especially like she was hoping it was family, scared it wasn't, wasn't sure. And um, just to know, you know, put yourself out there and, and let them know that you understand what they're going through. At times it can be scary, the unknown can be scary. Um, it's it's really nice to see that you know there's still some good people out there like Adam and Amy that are in this field that really care beyond just you know lights camera action it's more than the actual production so the last thing that I just kinda of want to add on to this and this is just um, it's not really about kindred spirits um, it's going into my review on ghost adventures and everyone's dying to hear what I have to say on that so going into my review on GAC ghost adventures still is holding the number one spot for being, actually, Ghost Adventures is still holding the spot for being the only, only, only paranormal series. 
out of all of these shows that we've all seen, you know, as consumers and as paranormal enthusiasts come and go, they are the only show to have raw footage of just the crew. Aaron, even when Nick was involved, Billy and Jay are the fam are the only camera guys, period. You know, the one thing I was like I was hoping for Kindred Spirits was Will Adam and Amy be the only ones shooting? That's really hard when there's only two investigators, but I mean, I'm, I've done it with Blake before, so I was just like hoping, hoping that maybe it was going to be on the more raw side of things, and um, you know, they were sitting doing the interviews, and you see um, the different camera angle, you know, they're both at like the little cafe, and there's one camera basically on Adam, one cat, one camera on Amy, two back here so you can see both of them and so ghost adventures still you know you have to look at like the actual film and production side of things so when you do look at the scrolling credits like when ghost adventures is over you do see a couple executive producers of course Zach is at the top and then you see producers field producers all this stuff okay but the only time those people are involved on Zach's set are for the reenactments and that's because reenactments aren't raw, right? Like reenactments are kind of some sort of scripted. I wouldn't say scripted verbally, but scripted with your body language and how you're doing things properly. And you kind of have to almost have directors come in and say, cut, that was bad, we need to do it again, take two. You know, we're getting deeper into film. Zach doesn't do that side of it. So I'm assuming that's why Zach has other executive producers. The Travel Channel is more involved with that side of it. And also with producers, they're there to help with the crew, help with the cast. Um, you know, they're hiring extras on set, and Zach doesn't want to be involved in that. So if you watch the camera angle, you know, the camera lens angles with Zach and the guys when they're on Ghost Adventures, they always try to make sure that in between cuts, they show Jay, Billy, and Aaron only with cameras. And they're filming each other and they're filming Zach. Zach's doing the interviews and they're filming each other. They always, even if it's for one or two seconds or if it's like Aaron laughing and he's holding the camera up. So you know it's proof that the only people there are those four people. And that's what makes it more authentic to us because they become not only the paranormal investigators, but they become the crew. You know that it can't be contaminated by having five camera techs and an audio tech in there and all of this stuff. Sadly, Kindred Spirits definitely had, you know, Amy had a couple of camera crews. That's okay. I mean, every single paranormal show is that way. And the point of that is to make it look like a serious, professional, you know, show. They don't want it to look like kind of raw. And Zach is the only one that has taken it to a documentary level. And I really feel like that is why we as you know, these paranormal connoisseurs like Zach's show so much. That's why he's thrived. That's why he's still going strong after, what, 13, 14 seasons? Because we, as investigators, we don't have camera techs and audio techs when we go to investigate. We only have our crew and each other. So Zach seems more legitimate because he runs it the same way we would if we were naturally doing this as well. Another thing that is like the best part probably about Zach is that he interacts with the audience and he likes to include the audience. So that's what we call breaking the fourth wall. And if you've ever seen the movie of Deadpool, which is super inappropriate, but it's hilarious if you get a chance to watch it. Um, that's what the comic book series is surrounding Ryan Reynolds' character, Deadpool. He is the only character in the Marvel world that breaks the fourth wall. And Zack is the only character in the paranormal that breaks the fourth wall. Why do we like that as consumers? Because he's like, we are going to go on a ghost hunt. We are going to go to Texas. We are going to take you to Route 666. This is our travel guide, blah, blah, blah. And it makes us as consumers be like, yes, we are all going. It's not just us watching a show. And it basically most, no, all paranormal shows other than Zach turn into um, basically a video game, right? Like if you guys have ever played video games, I don't know, I play World of Warcraft, your character is in front of you and you're walking behind your character. And you're, you're telling your character what to do, but it's going everywhere. 
That's basically how most of the shows are. You're watching Amy, Bruno, and I walk here. You're watching Adam go here to do the library stuff. You're watching all of them in second and third person. And then out of nowhere comes this voiceover that's basically explaining what's going on. It's like the voice of God is what we call it in production. And you're like, okay, well, Amy is um, doing the voiceover for this. Adam's doing the voiceover for that. Um, and, or Nick Groff, you know, with his new shows is the voiceover for that. Zach is the only real true solo host, meaning one, in all of these shows. Most everyone else still shares it. And I mean, I know Aaron comes on to do it and, and Billy comes on to talk and stuff like that. But theoretically, Zach does the interviews, you know, Zach does the walkthroughs. He does all of the on-camera stuff on trying to tell you what's going on. You know, he does really fulfill that role of a lead investigator, um, executive producer, and in charge of the set. We just don't see that with everyone else. I think that's why we really appreciate Ghost Adventures as much as we do, because we want to feel included. If you like the paranormal field, like we all do so much, we want to be there, right? Like, we want to go. I want to go to Route 666. Yeah, it was scary as hell, but I want to go. And it's the next closest thing to make it feel realistic to us as consumers. So, as so many shows that we've seen, some of them have failed, a lot of them have failed. Whether they're not on because of the production company has failed them or because we as consumers are like, I'm done with that. Still, Zach is thriving at number one and um, it's really cool and it's they should be super proud of themselves as a crew because... I was really worried when Nick left that the show was gonna go down the toilet. All right, let's move on to the review of Ghost Adventures Halloween Special, two hours, Route 666. So last year was Deadwood. I think I did a review on it. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't like this year for sure. I really liked that they did the two hour special. Again, I really liked that they um, actually included more locations. I feel like that made it more interesting and exciting. So the first spot they hit was the DeSoto Hotel, or if I probably said that and I sound like a super white girl, but um, you know, this place is in Texas and it looks strange. There was a point where like the camera fell, you know, the GoPro fell out of the corner. Um, people were like picking it up, carrying it in the rooms. I was kind of shocked that it wasn't stolen. You know, you saw it the first time, you're like, oh shit, they're gonna take that shit. They're gonna go pawn it. And then there was another scene where like this guy threw something away in the trash and looked over it. And that freaked me out because for some reason I thought to myself, like he doesn't look real. Like that could be a full bodied like apparition. He just looked very strange to me. His energy was very strange to me. Maybe that was just my empathy reading it. And then they go into the basement and then this like gigantic, you know, fan thing flies down. It falls over and... The thing with Jay, did you guys see on the table, like it started getting, I don't even know what that was. It was like a tripod mount or a remote or something. And like, it's just slowly being pulled off the table. That was insane to me. Like, that's terrifying. Like those moments where something is that strong to be able to manifest, to move something so smoothly and quick like that. I've had a couple moments like that in my life, but only a couple because it takes something really strong to do that. And I was like blown away, honestly, by the footage of Jay because he looked terrified. He jumped up, he was like pointing at the camera, like, did you guys see that? And uh, that was pretty freaking scary, man. Like, I can't believe he got through that, staying in that room, being at nerve center by himself without having to go buy a men's depends. Now, the smudging in the basement. I know that they hit the smudge stick on that big fan and they think that's why this thing threw it. Um, I hope that they asked permission from the owners to do the smudging and stuff. Um, just for you guys out there, if you've ever smudged or cleansed, it's, it's a really big process. Like, you can't just do it in five minutes. You have to do it properly. Um, there's ways to, like, begin the smudging and end the smudging, especially I'm Native American, so I, I try to stay really particular with it. Um, but don't ever cleanse or smudge a location or a house without their permission, ever. Um, and the reason is I've been to locations where I always offer it. Like when I'm doing the, the written up contract for doing like actual filming on their, on their property, I offer the smudging 
99.99% of the time they're going to turn it down and especially like I've been to some big historical sites like the Stanley, like Rivers Inn, like Paonia. They don't want to get rid of the ghosts and why? Because that's what brings them money. People want to come visit them for those ghosts. It kind of sucks because in a way you think of it as like an amusement park, you know, like oh people are paying me money to come visit the dead people and you know it's going to turn into Lizzie Borden eventually where like the entities are just over it and they want to be left alone but that's their right as owners the owners of that property sometimes there are even people that are like lineage like they they are related to the people that built that property that died in that property and their family and they don't want you to smudge their family out so all I have to say is like I Zach didn't address that which is fine just make sure that you get permission before you smudge because that could be like serious consequences. Like people are serious about their business and if you smudge there's a chance you could rid that house of the, those things and you could end their business and livelihood. And I'm not saying it's right that it's an amusement park, but I am saying that you have to respect people and their businesses. Okay, moving on to Concordia, was it Concordia Cemetery? Poor Billy, oh my God. Okay, I've worked with Billy, like you guys know this, and like, oh my God, the dude's awesome. Like Billy is, um, he doesn't like the dark stuff. Like if you really sit down with Billy and like have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation, like he does not like bad stuff, he doesn't like dark stuff. His family doesn't like dark stuff, so he tries to stay away from it so it doesn't affect his family life. And, um, you know, he's in the cemetery and he's taking these toys. And I don't think that it was meant to be like a provocation thing. I think it was like, um, if there are kid spirits or something, like, let's have some options to try and get them to come out and not be afraid. But those three, like, ghostly images of, like, weird, like, sideways, trooping along, creepy, oh my god, creepy. I, and you know, he called the police, like, they show that, it's such raw footage, like, the police come over, he's like, I think there's, like, some weird people, you know, in the cemetery stalking me out, I don't want to get shot, you know, like, I mean, he did things the right way, like, I mean, how do you call the police, I'm sure that they were... You know, usually when Ghost Adventures is filming, they will call the local authorities, you know, to get people to, to follow around to make sure that they're safe. So I'm assuming the police weren't far, but can you imagine, like, radio, you know, put radio the police, hey, um, over, I wanted to let you know that I think there's some three ghosts, like, stalking me out, and I need you to check and make sure they're not human. No, I'm pretty sure that they're dead and they're just like creepy shadow apparitions, but can you check the park for me over? How do you answer that to the police? And the police is like, these mofos are, I don't believe the shit. Can you imagine like that's what, like police and higher authority, they don't believe in paranormal. Like judges don't believe in paranormal because like, they're all scientific minds, you know, for the most part, there's some, but for the most part, they think, all of us are crazy. Poor Billy, I'm glad he survived. Creepy and uh, yeah, I don't know how I would feel if I saw those three apparition things. And it got so intense he was like hiding behind a tree. What? Like this poor fool, like I can't even imagine like being outside, it's not even like a regular house where you can go hide, you know, somewhere, like lock a door. When you're outside and you're investigating, you're like completely exposed to not only whatever's there, which could just transport and teleport right behind you, and on top of that, all of the elements. And then he had that crow, or whatever it was, squawk in his face. Once again, this was a trip that the guys should have packed to pens because, oh my god. I've been in those situations, man. Like, I've been in, situa in really scary situations. You know, it doesn't happen all the time, but I have been in those situations where I'm like, I'm gonna pee. I'm not ashamed to say it. Saving the last, the best for last, is Goatman's Bridge. And there was all kinds of kerfunkles that happened to these guys, and let's just chat about it. So first thing that happens is Ashley starts crying and she gets really affected who is Jay's wife. Okay, oddly, like I actually met Ashley on set. We used to follow each other on social media. Um, she is really cool. She's kind of um, to herself. She's a little bit withdrawn. and. I think she just really focuses on work and like stuff she has to do, um, but she's really cool and she's very composed like all the time. I, she was on set for the whole time in Paranormal Challenge. 
um, any of the professional pictures that you guys see from you know our team and stuff um, that's all from Ashley I know she has like a really big salary too but we'll talk about that later she's very composed uh, she she does she's not totally involved in the paranormal unless she's asked to do so but for her to like just you know not be involved necessarily in the interview and then just start bawling is very interesting especially when all of these other women were affected um, and so then later obviously we had even more stuff go on but first let's go to when they sent Billy on the boat the boat the boat the boat what were they thinking on about sending Billy on a boat that was built in 1933 that has a goddamn hole in the bottom and he's gonna freaking sink at the bottom of this brown river which looks like the Amazon River in the middle of Africa. What were you guys thinking? Like poor Billy, he's out in the middle of the boat, three miles up the road and there's water in the boat. That is scarier to me than any demon on land. Like, ah, uh, so he made it back, thank God. Heard the gunshots, that's weird, you know? Like there is something about locations that are like super dark that gunshots are involved in. So if you guys remember, um, I posted that episode of Gold Camp Road, which is in Colorado Springs. I went there with my friend Matt, who we, you know, we were both in film school. He was graduating. That was actually his final project. But something that we left out, um, you know, because we were filming for school and stuff, when we went to the third tunnel, which if you haven't seen it, I'll link it below, but when we went to the third tunnel, we went on the second night that we were there, and as we, and it's a long walk, like I'm talking like four miles in the dark on a freaking mountain with no hiking trail, which is really safe. And we're walking around this, this trail thing or whatever you call it, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's like three or four guys that come running up to us. And we were kind of startled and scared, and they're like, "What are you doing?" And we were like, "We're filming," you know. And they're like, well, "We're gonna rob you," and all this stuff. And we were like, "Great!" And they were like, and then all of a sudden, Matt was like, "Hey, don't you know my brother Brock?" It's just weird. And then the guy like wouldn't rob us after that. And we were like, okay, should we? And so he was like, well, hey, I'm gonna go grab you some beers. We're all partying in the third tunnel. Do you want to come up here? And we're like, okay. And he was like, well, I'll go get it ready for you. And so they were like high or drunk or both. And they st they were like, you gonna meet us up there? And we're like, yeah, we'll be right there. And so these guys took off running and Matt and I had a crew. In fact, his brothers were there with us helping us film. And Matt and I were like, um, is this worth our lives? Like these people are not there. And we were standing there, and because the third tunnel was, it was crashed, and it's like half up, and um, you know it's supposed to be really, really haunted because there were deaths in it. And all of a sudden, we started hearing gunshots being fired from the third tunnel, where these guys just ran towards. And they're drunk and high, and God knows what could happen. And so Matt and I are like, all right, film project due for school. Is it worth our lives? Because if we're dead, it's not gonna be turned in anyway. No, we're gonna turn around and leave. So I don't know what the deal is with like, I don't know, obviously, were they real gunshots? I don't know, we weren't there. Was Billy's that he heard a gunshot? I don't know, he doesn't know, you know nobody knows. What is the deal with gunshots with really dark locations? I don't know, but it's interesting. It makes you wonder if it could be paranormal, are they trying to threaten you or scare you off from going or getting involved deeper with what you're, you're in the middle of. So after that, they're walking through the forest and getting ready to enter, which looks like Hell's Gate with this like swampy, like horrific greenery and you have to walk through the tunnel. And two things happen. One, they see these two beady eyes, creepy, oh my God. Um, yeah, I would definitely say that's a demonic forest. <laughs> and two, Zach has a spider drop on him that's God forbid gotta be this big. Oh no. Like, and my question is why didn't they like show them checking Zach to make sure it was off of him? Because that was hepatitis. Like right there, that was full on hepatitis. If that shit bit him. That was hepatitis. Like, infection city, I don't even know, man. But it's like, ugh. I'm like, if I do any investigating, I'm gonna like wear a poncho 
and like go in like I'm gonna look like the killer from I know what you did last summer and I'm gonna be <laughs> suited out with like a wetsuit and like my neck's gonna be covered and oh no no I can't even believe he didn't feel that crawling on him oh. okay so moving forward then Ashley decides they said you know actually this is before they send Ashley out she um, she is very brave I will give you that um, they send her out she ends up like getting hit and like falling it was weird I didn't think it looked like she got hit on her head I thought it looked like she got like like whacked in the back of the leg or the back of the knee um, just the way her leg like kind of like bent so you know instances when stuff like that happens and you're so close to interacting with the other side that you're getting physically assaulted maybe she doesn't remember what happened it's like for her to be hit that hard on the side of her face and she has this like huge red welt I don't know I just think that maybe she wasn't all there especially when she was so emotional about what was happening so then um, at some point or another you know they're seeing stuff they they look like they're getting pretty discombobulated with the area which it's a pretty dense thick forest so yeah I'm sure that they were um, Jay at some point says he's found this ancient um, inscription and he's going to perform um, this whatever you want to call it verbiage um, and he quote said I'm summoning two demons for protection no no bad idea it's a really bad idea please don't ever summon demons for anything what are you doing? And I know Zach said, oh, it's not, you know, it's not satanic, it's not black magic. Bull sheet, bull honky. That is straight up invocation. Invocation is a satanic ritual where you're summoning demons for protection, for help, for whatever. Um, yeah, he was in the circle, which is part of like Wiccan witchcraft stuff. Um, it is supposed to be safe if you stay inside the circle, if you exit the circle without closing it properly, you can have like some serious, serious problems. But I don't care where he says he got it from, but I will say that it, it was completely satanic. Why? Because I actually study all of it and I don't study it for practice. I don't practice Satanism. I'm not a witch. I don't practice Wiccan or witchcraft. But if you look right here, I just get random books from you guys. I have a P.O. box and people will just send me random stuff to educate myself. And so, you know, I, I learn about different things. And then this is like Wikipedia. Does this mean I'm going to become a witch? Does this mean I'm going to practice Satanism? No, no. It means that you are ignorant to be a lead investigator and not know every part of this realm, which you can't, it's impossible to know everything. I'm never gonna be a demonologist, but I wanna make sure that when I take my crew in somewhere that we're not gonna have a really big problem. And Jay summoning demons for protection is a really big problem. Jay wasn't himself, Aaron's not seeing shit, right? He like went to hit Zach. He's blurry eyed, you know, and that was legit. When Aaron like stumbled back, like after getting up, he was like, and like, that was like a legit like hook. You know, that's what guys do when they can't see or when things aren't right. Like their defensive mechanism is to like, is to slap and hit, you know? Jay wouldn't come out of the circle. Billy's pissed. Billy's pissed. Why is Billy pissed guys? Because he hates that shit. That's why he doesn't like the dark stuff. He told everybody, I wasn't, I wasn't cool with this to begin with. And did you notice that it started affecting everyone but Billy? I mean, I know Billy has a strong faith. He doesn't really ever talk about it, but Billy is very, like, he has a very strong faith. And that's interesting how Billy wasn't affected like everybody else was. Yeah, he got the shit scared out of him at the cemetery. But then you have Aaron that got, like, knocked back and dragged, his skin's dangling off of his arm. You have Jay that's, like, obsessed with the circle, staying in the circle, don't leave the circle, we need to be here, blah, 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 blah. It's not safe outside the circle. And then you have Zach that thinks he's getting choked, which we'll talk about in a minute. But then at the end, after all of this, Ashley quits. So what's my opinion on Ashley quitting? You know, Ashley definitely could have gotten attachment. She could have been affected by the forest like everyone says females are. 
But I think that the real re because Ashley didn't quit immediately. I think she quit afterwards where she couldn't get rid of this thing or whatever. I think that the problem stems from this spell, ancient spell that, that her husband did and doesn't know what he's doing. And I'm sure shit is like completely permanently attached to not only just Jay, but both of them now. First of all, I don't think that anybody should ever be doing a sat satanic ritual, even in the name of, you know, experimental. Even if you don't believe in it, fine. Don't freaking do it then. Like, I think that, you know, I've no, I actually know people that are real Wiccans and I know people that are, uh, what's the name? Warlocks. They actually identify as warlocks. And they are like years and years and years of experience. And <clears throat> most of these people that are Wiccans and warlocks are very religious. They're very, they, they believe in God and angels and, and all that stuff. And they would never, I would never have seen them go in there and, and perform this. And, you know, Jay is not experienced. He's, he doesn't um, identify himself as a warlock or a witch or a Wiccan. Um, I know he's not satanic. I'm not saying that he's into dark stuff. I think that he's very intelligent. Like now that Nick is gone, like now that Nick left and Jay stepped up to be a part of the crew, Jay is the current Egon of Ghost Adventures, okay? Jay is always doing extra research and history and he's talking about, oh, I could do this and we can try this and let's do experiments. So Jay is intel, like obviously Jay has a high IQ, like we can all agree to that, but you know, sometimes people with high IQs can get them in trouble, and I think that Jay made a really, really big mistake, and I think that it cost Ashley her job, and I bet you anything that to this day they are still having problems. I don't know how they can rid themselves of it. I'm not a Wiccan. They actually are probably going to have to get someone involved that's actually either been a current Satanist or a past Satanist that will be able to help rid them of this, if it's even possible. I don't know. Um, you know, there, there could be a permanent thing where, um, you know, summoning a demon for protect, in the name of protection, um, they could be torturing Ashley thinking they're protecting him from her. I mean, you're getting into a whole nother realm of just crap that you don't want to open up, you don't want to stir up. And I just hope that they get it taken care of. I hope that they find the right people to close this, um, door that they should have never opened. And I hope that it doesn't go as far as destroying their marriage because we all know with Aaron Goodwin, you know, he was married be like right at the beginning of Ghost Adventures and he let shit get way too out of hand and it caused the, the end of his marriage. So let's just hope as fans of all of them that it doesn't get to that point. And this needs to be a lesson to all of us as paranormal enthusiasts and especially, especially newbies out there. Don't mess with the black magic. Don't mess with the Satanism stuff. Don't mess with the hoodoo voodoo. Um, that stuff's really bad. And I'm not saying just for other people, um, but obviously Ashley and Jay were affected the worst. And that's why, because this shit is powerful and strong. Go talk to high priestesses in Louisiana. Look up some of their stuff because the people that practice hoodoo voodoo also, they... 100% believe that it's real and I do too. And and it can affect your life to the point where Ashley, who made a ginormous salary, I mean, she made a really good freaking salary. So she not only, you know, her and Jay are living pretty decent, right? Like they, he's a camera tech, he works for them. He's also doing investigative stuff. Um, you know, then he's like thinking of experiments. So they're probably paying him extra for that. Then you have Ashley that's done the still photography. She's also been on TV with Ghost Adventures. So she's making money out for that. For her to come forward and, and, you know, she's kind of becoming progressive as far as a female and guest investigator. We've seen her a few times on GAC. She's saying that that's not important to me. None of this is important to me. My salary is not important to me. The way that my husband and I live is not important to me with the money. And I'm quitting and walking away from it all because I've been affected so badly, her and her family. So um, let this be a lesson to don't mess with that shit. Let's just say it was some sort of invocation gone the really worst way, wrong way possible. What did I think about Aaron getting thrown and bleeding? Ouch. I mean, come on, he didn't do that himself. Who's going to be willing to throw themselves to where their skin's peeling back off of their arm. 
Um, one thing we've always believed in Aaron is that he gives the very real, authentic um, expressions and reactions. Um, he hates it when Zach sends him alone. We know that. Um, he hates it when he sees things and things happen. He's always like, oh, dude, oh my God. You know, he always panics. He's like, he'll ramble, which is a natural reaction for we as humans when we experience or see something scary. Um, and then, you know, he was pretty upset. Like he was like, I just want to go home. I just want to go home. So I, I totally believe that, that Aaron was going through some stuff. Now, as for Zach being choked, um, this is the biggest question that you guys have had for me. And I find it funny, you guys out there, everybody usually tweets at me like, oh my God, wasn't Ghost Adventures great last night? And what did you think about? What is, wasn't it awesome? Like, No one said that to me. So like you guys are waiting to hear what I have to say and I don't think like, you're putting me under some pressure and I don't appreciate it, no, I'm joking. So, okay, Zach um, starts basically choking himself, okay? I have to just go with devil's advocate on this. So on one side, we all know Zach to be very vain, um, fairly into himself. It's just his character. It's who he is. Yeah, he off camera, he's very different. He's a lot more withdrawn. He has social anxiety, but he's still vain. Like, you know, he, he cares about his appearance and, and what he's, he works out a lot. He t used to tan, you know, like his hair is always in place. Like, so Zach likes to be in control, right? Like he's all about being in control. And so on one side of this, um, I believe it was real because his face was like not, you know, he was just out of character. Um, he was like choking himself. He, he didn't look right. He didn't feel right. Um, he's like throwing himself at, you know, was it Aaron on the ground or whatever and all this stuff. And, um, you know, he, when he, when you're a vain person, you don't want to present yourself as, I don't want to say being ugly, but you know what I mean? Like you're not going to embarrass yourself. That's a better word for it. And so on one side of this, I just don't see Zach as willingly, you know, faking something, um, to make himself look funny or weird or I mean what if his acting skills went wrong it didn't it looked pretty authentic now also with the side of being the devil's advocate and, and believing this was real when I was on set with paranormal challenge when I've worked with them before um, in the contracts you know being in documentary basically the contracts you sign is like if something's happening you can't drop the camera um, even more than likely like it has to be a life or death situation like Zach is a stifler. I've told you like on set, he's like hard, hardcore. Like this is how it is and that's the way it is. And uh, you know, in his contracts, it says if you drop the camera, you're more than likely gonna be fired from your job. So that's why most of the time, even when something scary goes on, you'll see Billy just be like, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you sure you're okay, man? And he doesn't drop the camera because it's the contract. So this is the very first time in Ghost Adventures history I've ever seen a camera get thrown. Billy was behind the camera. Billy threw the camera to attend to Zach to make sure he was okay. So two th two reasons for that. One, Billy could have lost his job because I'm, sh I'm assuming the contracts are the same or even worse because it's so many seasons in. Two, cameras are freaking expensive. You don't just drop a camera. Like the ones GAC uses, I can guarantee you just the handy cams that they use are at least $1,500 a piece, if not more. Now I know that the studio can replace them, but they're not gonna be willing to replace them unless some shit went down. You know what I mean? Like, you can't come to me with an excuse and be like, I accidentally dropped it in the river, or, oh, sorry, I dropped it off a bridge. Like, the studio's gonna be like, huh, then you're gonna pay for it. So it's not like, um, it's not like that. It's, it's like, I don't give a shit, I dropped the camera because there's a life or death situation going on. And like Billy like attacked Zach to stop him from hurting himself. I don't know if you guys know this in real life, but Billy and Zach are like very close. They're like super best friends. Um, they have been for a while. They just have a lot in common. It started out with like Nick and Zach being super close, but eventually Billy and Zach became very close. And I think another reason for it was they both used to DJ. So they kind of um, just had mutual you know, hobbies that they like to do outside of Ghost Adventures. They ATV together, they fish together, you know, all that stuff. Aaron doesn't do any of that stuff. So they're very close. So I was actually 
um, I was surprised to see that Billy just threw the camera, to, you know, to help his friend. They're, they're best friends. Um, he was like, I'm going to help my best friend. I don't care if I could get in trouble from the studio. It, it's potentially he could get fired from the, the studio for dropping the camera, not from Zach necessarily. Yeah, Zach's an EP, but the studio is the one that essentially draws up the contract, not Zach specifically. They are signed to, si they are signed to the Travel Channel and... Um, it used to be my Tuella. I'm not sure if it's the same production company. So it was pretty shocking to me that Billy just was like, don't give a shit, I'm helping my friend, and, and the camera's rolling around and all that stuff. Um, now, on the other side of this, we weren't there. On the other side of this, I've never seen someone choke themselves. I've never seen it get to that level. Um, we all know as Zach's fans that he's surrounded by a lot of dark stuff. He has a museum that's full of probably more than likely demonic possessed stuff. And, um, this stuff has, some of it's been sent to the business, some of it's been sent to the house. We know that he used to have a dungeon. Um, he recorded an entire music album in his dungeon, uh, full of voices, some even demonic. Uh, he thinks that he is... Um, has a horrible attachment still to this day from Bobby Mackey's and it's a female um, that basically is so possessive over him that will not allow him to date anyone, any girl that, that comes around him. Um, this female attachment will attack her. Um, the only female that's allowed in his house really other than family is um, his assistant. So we all know Zach likes the dark stuff. I mean, maybe he, I, I mean, I think at the beginning he was curious about it. He dipped his toe in the dark pool and then ended up falling in. Um, and I don't think that he's, he's ever going to get out. I think that once you get in that realm of darkness, I'm not talking Satanism or like black magic. I'm not saying that stuff. Just being around, around dark, it could be demons. Some of it's demons, some of it's not. Could be just dark entities. It's that dark energy. Um, he had a freaking dungeon in his house, for God's sake. Um, who knows if the, if his attachments um, were a cause of, of this choking himself? Like, I mean, no one knows. Was it legitimate or not? I mean, I don't know. On, on the other side of Devil's Advocate, I've never seen someone choke themselves. Um, I have seen possessions. There was one time that I can compare to that was similar to this, but not, not a physical threat. Um, we were at, we lived in a house in Colorado Springs that was very, very haunted. Um, and I don't want to go into, um, into super details, but let's just leave it at, um, I had, I had planned to get married with Blake and the day of our wedding, my father-in-law showed up to our house and tried to kill us. And um, it's dramatic and I don't want to talk about the details. Some of you have seen some of my other videos on my other channel explaining it. I'm not going to go into details here. But I swear to you that after that happened, his, his father was um, basically like withheld by the police and there was a restraining order placed and all that stuff. Um, probably not mentally all there. I'm not sure if he was on drugs or what. Basically, he came to stop the wedding. I swear after that, our house was so horribly haunted. So I don't know if his dad brought like his demons or like his attachments or, or riled something up in our house. Um, so the very last day that we were there, we had um, like my production crew come down and we did an investigation. I still have the footage. It's never been edited. Um, I would be willing to post it, but it's going to take a while to edit it because it's hours and hours of footage. But in this footage, we got doors opening, slamming shut. We got demonic voices, like really dark shit. And I would never live with that in my house because I have animals. I don't, I am of the light. I've told you guys that. Um, but there was a point when we were investigating one night in the master bedroom, which was, was mine and Blake's bedroom. And Blake was in the corner by himself and me and three crew members were in the other corner. Um, Blake was just doing like, or getting ready to do an EVP session. And uh, he's a big dude. He's like 6'1". And so Blake sits down like on his knees to do an EVP session. And all of a sudden he's like, I can't see, I can't see. And, I, and we're like, what do you mean? And he's like, I just can't see, I can't see anything. And he said that it was like this black mist cloud, but it felt like curtains engulfed him. And it was so black he couldn't see. And he started to panic. And through the night vision we can see him and it looks like he's trying to push it away. 
And then it's, it was so, like, he, then he got tinnitus, which is the ear ringing, which is what Aaron was saying he was getting. And so he's, like, covering his ears, and he starts to go in a panic mode. And this energy that's engulfing him scares him so bad that he, I've never heard him scream so loud at the top of his voice. Basically, like, he screamed, like, just a bloody murder scream, and, then, and screamed, get away. And then he was able to see after that. But that was the same intensity um, in real life that I've ever seen versus when Zach was like, you know, to choke yourself and like almost cause yourself to pass out. It's like a really scary, big, dramatic deal. So I could see how it would, that's the, I've seen dramatic stuff happen. Um, so did it happen? Did it not happen? I don't know. We weren't there. We're never going to be there all the time, you know. Some, some fans have been able to see some of them, you know, do their investigations. I've been lucky enough to be on set with them um, that I, I know Zach's not a fraud. Um, the way he runs things, he's not a fraud. He likes to keep things raw and legit and authentic, which is where I get my, you know, when I ghost hunt, I get that from my admiration from working with him on set. And, uh, but I don't know, like, you just don't know. It, you'd have to be there to see it. That's one of those things that... Um, I don't think anyone's ever going to fully believe it or not believe it, you know, in order to understand unless you were bare witnessing. And I would say with Aaron's tinnitus and then Aaron was even like feeling like he was going to pass out and then Jay just wasn't right. But I will give super props for that episode to Billy because he kept his shit together. Um, he was make he made sure that Aaron was okay. He made sure Zach was okay. He made sure that Jay was okay and out of the circle. Um, and, you know, it really kind of shows you if you step back that Billy does have a lot of faith. And I'm not saying that you have to be super religious because I'm not. Like, I can't tell you guys there's one religion I believe in. Like, I like a little bit of this. And then I kind of believe in Catholicism because I love the archangels. And I've said before that Archangel Michael is my homeboy. Um, and then, then, you know, I was kind of raised like Lutheran and Christian, so I, but I don't like everything. So what I try to do is I take a little bit of everything that I like and that I believe in and I make it my own. And you're allowed to still have beliefs and, and faiths, whether you believe in God or not. There's still other faiths that you can follow or spirituality. And I really feel like that Billy has proven that. Billy had like the biggest come through as far as showing that it pays off to have some sort of faith no matter what it is. Um, it will save your ass from that dark shit and you never know what you're going to run into, especially as a paranormal investigator. Hands down, I have to say Route 66, Route 666, um, was probably the best episode of ghost hunting that I've ever seen. Um, the eyes, I really wish they would have had a thermal cam in there, damn it, but you know, another thing that the crew is known for is they use the best equipment and I don't just mean ghost hunting equipment I also mean like their cameras are clear as shit like and that's what you need in this industry because even us as investigators if we're out in the middle of nowhere all we have is our lenses to look through that little tiny camera lens that is our eyes and um, when you get crappy footage where it's like blurry or, or you forget to turn the camera on or something like you want to see it you want to be there you want to know what's going on um, you know, you want to feel like it's first person, like that fourth wall is gone. So kudos to Gak, they are still the shit. And um, I'm happy that they're going strong. Still feel really bad for Nick, but um, everything must have happened for a reason. And uh, I just hope that Jay gets help for sure. Um, and I hope Ashley and him are okay because I know what it's like to be followed home and it's scary and that's why I don't let it happen anymore. And so anyways, guys, I hope that you like my review. What did you think of Kindred Spirits? I'm really glad that Amy and Adam are back. I think they're both great. Like I said, I think it's progressive for the day and age that we're in, having a female um, that's doing pretty damn good for herself and, and having a gay male in paranormal. It's time. It's just, it's what the time is. It's 2016. It, we have to be progressive. Uh, we have to move forward, not just as a paranormal community, but in society. So. What did you guys think of Kindred Spirits? What did you guys think of the episode for Route 666? Hopefully you agree with some of my comments. And ooh, we're almost to the Halloween. Um, I'm doing some Halloween countdowns and some of my favorites for my bucket list. 
Let me know what you guys think below, anything you guys want to chat about, and I will catch you guys next time.